What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Oh my God, did it live up to the hype, ladies and gentlemen. This feels like Avengers Endgame, baby. We knew it was going to be good. We didn't expect it to be this good. Oh, my God. The Western Conference play-in was amazing. A couple housekeeping things. Uh, leave a like is one. Subscribe if you're new is two. We dropped an episode of Called Game today. Go watch that. I would appreciate it. It helps the channel. <laughs> it didn't do very well on this episode. But, hey, if, if you got some free time, go watch it. Leave it a like. Um, and these episodes of the recap are now on audio platforms. So go to Spotify and type in Called Game. You can also listen to this as far as and, and watching it, too. I, I know we want to talk about Warriors Lakers, um, but let, let's take a few minutes to talk about the first game because it was a good one too. It's going to get buried in history. It's going to get buried in history because um, the Western Conference and, and the Warriors and Lakers one was so, so good. But let, let me spend a couple minutes talking about this first game before we get to the the, the big one, all right? Spurs come out super, super dry. Memphis Grizzlies come out with a with a bang. Um, John Morant hit a three in the first quarter. I'm like, if John Morant is hitting threes, it's over with. Because every team that guards John Morant when it matters, they're going to be like, hey, you shoot. Um, you're Tony Allen still in Memphis because we don't trust your jump shot. He hit one. He hit two throughout the game, and that was amazing. Dylan Brooks, um, good performance. Dylan Brooks is one of these guys that you know he's going to bring it on the defensive side of the ball. There's all the statistics. I mean, the people that were commentating the game were showing you, like, Dylan Brooks, when he is guarding DeMar DeRose, DeMar DeRose, and it's this from the field, this from the field. Dylan Brooks is a clamper on the defensive side of the ball, but you don't really know what you're going to get from him offensively. He can be one for 10, or in today's case, he could put up 24 points, and they needed all of that, even though it wasn't like crazy 24. Um, he fouls the heck out of everybody, but he played great defense, and that was what mattered. The main guy in this game, the MVP, we're giving the award to Jonas Valanciunas, a 2020 game. This was a battle of the underrated centers between a Jakob Poto and Valanciunas. I think a lot of people realize how good Valanciunas is. I think not as many people realize how good of a defender Jacopoto is because he plays for the Spurs and nobody watches the Spurs really. Um, both of them came to play. You get the win for the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm not, if I'm the Spurs, Spurs fans, I'm not tripping too much about this, man. You, you just didn't hit shots, you know. Um, long term, I think the core that you have, that you are building, probably is better with a lottery pick. I saw my boy Pierre even tweet. Is this the last game we see of DeMar DeRozan in a Spurs uniform? That's something that we got to look out for this offseason. But when you look at your core of, of DeJounte, Lonnie, Keldon, Jakob, Devin Vassell off the bench, you're, you're in a good spot, bro. So I, I wouldn't even trip too much. Honestly, if you win this game, you're probably losing in the next one anyway. Because let's transition. Memphis fans, you know I ride with you, bro. But we got to talk about the main, um, the main course. And that was the Lakers versus Warriors. It was everything. Yeah, yeah, this was this was better than the snap. It really was better than the snap. Let's talk about it, man. They started off the Golden State Warriors came to play. I want to commend them. As you know, the Golden State Warriors lost this game, lose by three because LeBron gave gave one of the most ridiculous shots in play in history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And play in history. He said he was seeing three rims and he shot it at the middle one. Um, so the Warriors do lose this, but the Warriors have no business being in this game. When it comes to just just tallying up talent, Warriors fans should be super excited that they competed. I, I would take them in this second play-in game against the Memphis Grizzlies because they just beat the Memphis Grizzlies like three to four days ago. I trust them more against the Memphis Grizzlies. But as far as them going against the Lakers, who are, I would say, I'm going to give them the 100% healthy tab, even though we know LeBron and Anthony Davis may not be 100%, but they're playing. You know what I'm saying? The the biggest availability, biggest Ability is availability is the way the sand goes, and they're playing. The Warriors don't match up when it comes to talent with the Lakers. But they had this game, and it was good. It was good. You got to show the love to Stephen Curry because this man is a master on the offensive side of the ball. I, everybody knows this, but the gravity that this man has when he is running around the court is ridiculous. There were so many plays. And I, I'm going to give ESPN a W because they did a great job of reshowing a lot of the replays from this game. And it's not just like, oh, the Steph Curry double contested three-pointer replays, but it's like him just running around the court, basically showcasing one of the reasons why Steph Curry is as dominant or is as good as he is is because this man will not stop moving at all. You think he's about to come up to shoot a three? Nope, he's slipping back door for an easy layup. The man had four or five, like, reverse layups. It was great. Andrew Wiggins was amazing. It is so funny that Draymond Green last season, after they traded for Andrew Wiggins, he was like, Andrew Wiggins got the ability, got, got the, all the tools to be a great defender in this league. And we were all like, we just saw him for five straight years. We know he ain't got the defensive side of him. 
Well, he does. Um, and he showcased that a lot today. Guardy LeBron, he did an amazing job. All things considered, it's LeBron. You're not going to stop LeBron. All things considered, he did an amazing job. And then there was like this two-minute period. I think it was late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter, where Wiggins was selling on the offensive side of the ball. Turnover. He tried to take a jump shot. He thought he was fouled. It hit the corner of the rim. And then, because me and the boys, you know, we always watching these games together. Um, and Mike is a Lakers fan. He's like, hey, Wiggins, keep shooting those. And then two minutes later, he was like, Wiggins, please stop shooting because Wiggins turned it on offensively. Jump shot. Um, and I don't know if it was counted as an and one, but got strong on somebody. I think it was um, I think it was KCP got strong on the finish. Um, Wiggins is turning into one of those players that, yeah, he'd probably be best if the third, the fourth best option. But you will live with that. You will really live with that, especially if he's given that defensive effort. Draymond Green, if you watch my podcast, you know that when we did our all um, our award show a couple days ago, I guess, um, Draymond Green was highly, highly considered to be in top three in my defensive player of the year. I didn't end up giving it to him. I think I put him on the all defensive first team. And I remember seeing people in the comment section like Kenny Draymond ain't that great of a defender like he was five, four years ago. And I was like, you expose yourself, my guy. This man Draymond is an amazing defender still. You know how, like, I always want to, I always say that Rudy Gobert is the defensive system for the Utah Jazz. Draymond Green is up at that caliber as well. Now, it is a little bit different because Rudy Gobert is a seven foot player and him contesting at the rim is a lot easier than Draymond. But Draymond as a defender is damn near the system. For the Golden State Warriors, he is every, literally everywhere. And then people are slighting him because he can't score. Man, finished with two points and those two free throws. He cannot score. <laughs> uh, yeah, at all. You know, he had that one year where he averaged, I think it was two years in a row, he averaged like double-digit points. He shot like pretty solid from three-pointer one year. The one year he's an all-star. That's dead. That that Draymond Green, the offensive shooting the ball, Draymond is dead. But as far as like a floor, floor general is still there. And defensively, he was amazing. On He... He got Anthony Davis completely out of this game in the first half and then a lot of the third quarter. Then then Anthony Davis showcased that, hey, I'm a superstar. So even if you're playing amazing defense on me, I'm still a superstar and I can make some shots too. But Draymond was ridiculous. Kim Bazemore hit a couple of the biggest shots in the game and said, like, they don't have the talent that they should have even been in this game in the first place. Jordan Poole, big shots as well. That's all the love I'm giving to the, to the Warriors. Let's go to the actual winners here. Let me give you my winners. Contavious Caldwell Pope, when the team first started and they were they were looking dreadful, the Warriors were running and gunning, they're doing this. The guy that kept them afloat was Contavious Caldwell Pope. The guy that kept them afloat, and this is weird to see that this man shot one for four. Wesley Matthews down the stretch was amazing. And maybe I'm just thinking about his defensive highlights. He was amazing. He got an offensive rebound here, this and that. And they decided to close out with him instead of Dennis Schroeder because Dennis Schroeder was terrible. He, him and Cal Kuzma was killing the Lakers all game long. And then Frank Vogel was like, you know what, Kuz, we're not going to play you um, in this moment. Um, <laughs> we're not gonna play you in these moments. Um, Shooter, we're not gonna play you in these moments. And then uh, Andre Drummond didn't play none of the fourth quarter, which was the best thing Frank Vogel could have done. I don't know. It felt like this man Andre Drummond got so many touches. He only ended with three shot attempts, but I promise he ended with like eight, nine touches. And you like, bro, please get the ball out of his hands. We got Anthony Davis and and, and Andre Drummond on the court together, and we're feeding Andre Drummond. Are you kidding me? Um, but th then Frank Vogel was like, nah, we good. We're going to run small. Anthony Davis don't like playing center, but he's going against the Warriors, so you can run center because they're a small team as well. And then LeBron, man. LeBron first half. I don't know why LeBron does his things where he likes to – and I guess he does this in the playoffs as well, but he does it in the first game of a seven-game series. He's like, I'm going to fill out what this team is running. First game, we might lose, team. But second game, I'm going to realize what this scheme is, and I'm going to destroy it. That feels like what he did in this game, but it was like first half. It was first quarter type stuff. And then he came out in the third. Oh, my God. Dots after. The man was Patrick Mahomes, bro. Dots after. Dot after. Dot. First, he gets put back in the game early third quarter. He looks at Cal Kuzma. I, this, they read, you can read this man's lips. He says, cut. There's nine other players on the court right now that can hear you, bro. You told Cal Kuzma to cut. He cut. And you still got that pass in. His defender can hear you. You still still got the pass in. He was throwing dot after dot. Alex Caruso, cut. Boom. Easy. Uh, uh, Wesley Matthews, cut. Easy. Right? Oh, Wesley Matthews don't go up with it. One more. I just, the greatest, bro. Legitimately the greatest. And not to mention the biggest shot of the game. A, such a broken play. This man, Steph Curry, Steph Curry, 
in an elimin elimination game, a game that matters the most. And this is why we wanted the play-in. This is why the NBA fans thought the play-in was a beautiful, beautiful idea. Because it had two of the greatest players in the NBA battling it out when it mattered the most. You know? And it came down to the wire. It came down to a literal last shot, y'all. Last shot. Um, and, and people were complaining about the refing. Let's talk, let's talk about the refing. I'm not typically a guy that's going to talk, complain about the refs, because I know this is a human-made job. But but some some things are inexcusable. Um, let's talk about the Draymond Green foul on LeBron James. If you don't know what happened, LeBron James on the break. Draymond Green tries to contest, hits them all in his junk. Boom, 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 poking the eye of LeBron on the court. Basically crying. But it's that cry. That, like, something is in your eye cry. You know, it's not like he was boo-hoo crying. But, like, you could tell he got poked in that left eye, right? He got poked in the eye. Um, and then they had to review it. In my mind, I was 100% certain this was about to be a flagrant because it was contact to the head. And, and typically, once you have contact with the head on whatever, it is a flagrant one at the minimum. And if it's excessive, it's a flagrant two. Now, if you don't know the scenario, Dream on Green has already have a technical foul from from uh, technical from, from yapping at the mouth. So, if he gets called for a flagrant, he has thrown out of this game, and there's like two minutes left in it, and I believe that the refs didn't call it a flagrant for the viewers, and I made a tweet, and maybe this is the wrong tweet. I said that was a good call from the referees. They said it was the right call, but for the viewer experience to get them utmost potential out of this game I think Draymond Green had to be there now you can have a conversation with me about should that matter in a win or go home game and you're probably right that it shouldn't matter if this should be a flagrant you should call it as a flagrant but I'm happy that they didn't am I wrong here probably 100 actually not probably I am wrong here that should have been a flagrant but I am ex I am super happy that they didn't call it a flagrant and guess what at the end of the day it didn't matter the Lakers still won this game and this man has another story to add to his resume. I was seeing three rims out there because I got poked in the eye and I still hit the shot. You know what I'm saying? Um, and again, you kind of want the refs to be consistent. Because if I think of any other portion, of if, if this foul happened in the first quarter and Draymond doesn't have a technical foul yet, I think they call it a flagrant. I honestly do think, do think they call it a flagrant. But they get a call from Steve Javi like, bro, we got the most viewers we ever had in a, <laughs> in a game. I can't wait to see the Raiders for this. You can't throw out Draymond, bro. He's a big part of what the Warriors are doing here. If you throw out Draymond, well, they have no shot. So, you know what? Let's just get LeBron these free throws. And guess what they did? On the next possession, they called a moving screen on Draymond to give the ball back. So, so LeBron got two free throws and then possession. You know what I'm saying? Is that better than getting Draymond kicked out of the game? I don't know. You tell me. But what a game. Now, I know Suns fans. Actually, I would guess that Suns fans wanted to see the Warriors win this one because, again, talent-wise, the Warriors aren't anything compared to the Lakers. But the Suns, it's so unfortunate. I, I, Chris Paul is my, my guy, man. They're going against the Lakers in the first round. Ah, that's, 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 that's about as tough as it gets. You grind your butt off. You grind your butt off to end up a top seed. And no, there's no such thing as a buy in the Western Conference at all. But you play to be, get one of the top seeds to get a lesser opponent in the first round. But instead, you're about to get LeBron James with an extra, what, three, four days of rest? <sighs> That's a little bit rough. Who would I pick to win that series? I do not know, my guy. I do not know. Like, it's, it's, it's a coin flip. It is a coin flip, but that's why the Western Conference is as good as it is. I'm trying to think of other moments in this game that are worth talking about. Just know just know that everybody that watched this game enjoyed themselves. Even if you're a Warriors fan and you lost, you have to admit this was an absolute banger. And when you think about the stakes involved in it, it might end up being the game of the year so far. Because, yes, game 10 of the season where this player did this and it ended in the overtime, game winner is fun. Don't nothing beat a winner go home type game that came down to the last shot wow so next we have Memphis versus the Warriors like I said I'd probably pick the Warriors here because uh Steph Curry already did that thing to him a couple days ago um but anything can happen man the Memphis Grizzlies showed us today that they are capable of it John Morant said before this game we got to work on our closing and though they almost fumbled this bag again they went on like they they gave up like a 18 and 0 run or something when Valanciunas got out of that game um they almost fumbled this bag as well uh, they said they got to be better at closing games. I still believe that they could win it. But if I'm putting money on a, a winner go home uh, versus uh, Steph Curry, 
a superstar versus a team that doesn't have a superstar but it's like win by committee, I'd probably go with Steph Curry. And I think that Adam Seale would probably rather have Steph Curry, as fun as Ja Morant is to watch and as fun as the Memphis Grizzlies are to watch as a collective, I think he'd rather see the MVP caliber player in the playoffs. You know? And I think most fans outside of Memphis would agree. But then again, who knows? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a one eight matchup with the Utah Steph Curry versus the Utah Jazz would be amazing to see. It would be amazing to see how much of an impact Rudy Gobert could have in that series. You know, because obviously Rudy Gobert is limited offensively, but these guys run so small when it matters the most. We've seen. We've seen individual series where, like, when it was down to the wire and the opposing team went small, Rudy Gobert was kind of out there. Now, he has got significant – I have to keep uh, defending Rudy Gobert on this tip. He has got significantly better with keeping up with perimeter players than, than like, three, four years ago when they were going against the Rockets. But it's still not amazing enough that I feel confident with him getting on a Steph Curry switch. Steph Curry's already made that man spin around. Multiple times? Has it been two times? He's, he's hard to guard when you're seven foot one, you know? So let me know what you think about this, man. I, sw- I swear I felt like an Avengers movie, bro. I appreciate y'all. Go watch Call Game, for real, for real. Because uh, behind the scenes things, it was a 10 out of 10. Which means that it was the, the worst performing video we've uploaded this channel in the last 10. Not good for morale, if I'm keeping it a buck, uh, that we put so much work into the show and y'all didn't mess with the episode. I, I And it, this is me talking aloud because this is what the show is. I believe that Call Game... Um, and, and what people want to see in called game is very dependent on who the guest is. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if I got Derrick Rose on the show tomorrow, everybody is going to watch that. But since it's Thaddeus Young, and maybe not many as people attached to Thaddeus Young, less people are going to watch it. So, so I got to figure out a way to get people engaged in that show, even if the talent portion is not somebody you care about too much. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm also thinking about turning these rambles. Like, we're going to do these post-game rambles, keeping it 10 to 20. But I'm also thinking about doing a whole separate podcast. It's like 45 to an hour. Pat McAfee style, where I have guests in. How would you think about that? Let me know. I'm just spitballing. I'll see y'all tomorrow when we talk about, I think there's only one game tomorrow. If that game is trash, if it's a blowout, I'm not making it, I'm not talking about it. I'm just letting you know. I'll tweet about it. Follow me on Twitter. All right, bye.